I went to boot camp in 1986, so there was not a lot of digital media or anything out there that talked about the Marine Corps a whole lot. So my best friend in high school was a guy named Derrick Brown. And, uh, you know, we wanted to just, you know, be best friends forever. And so he said, hey, man, I'm joining the Marine Corps. He said, you should join it with me. I said, he's my buddy. Yeah, I'll join it with you. So growing up, I was sort of a class clown. I talked a lot and uh, <laughs> cracked jokes. I was an athlete, class clown, I was all that. And um, well, when I went to boot camp, I had to shut up. <laughs> but when I came back from boot camp, and this is what people told me, and I remember it too, um, I didn't talk, I didn't smile. I was like so serious. And so I'd get up at five in the morning, go running, you know, for nothing. But I was trying to stay in shape because I had to go to Camp Lejeune for my MOS training. A girl asked me my name and I said, Lance Corporal Beard. And my butt, and the guy's like, bruh, your real name. Oh, I was just so like, I don't like to use this word, but programmed. I was a Marine. I was in nothing else. In the Marine Corps, you had to fight through a lot of stuff. You know, they push you to your limit. It has um, helped me in my civilian life. So I took both my boys to the park to play football. There was two guys out there that was with us that were actual coaches uh, for College Hill Park. And all of a sudden they walked over to me and said, hey, uh, we're gonna split this team up into two, right? They got had so many kids to come out that year. They just said, okay, we're gonna have an eight-year-old team and a seven-year-old team, and we need somebody for this seven-year-old team. And they said, you wanna do it? So I said, all right, all right, I'll do it. So that first year, the first year we went two and six, we were horrible. And I actually tell the parents, I said, hey, look, I'm sorry, they, they threw me in this. I wasn't prepared. I didn't know I was gonna have to do this this year. So, and I said, if you guys come back next year and let me coach your children, I promise you it'll be different, I promise you. Went to the playoffs again. We only lost one game that year. And for the next like two years, we lost, we lost the game. We eventually won a championship. Yeah, missed those days. What I'm passionate about, I'm probably track, right? Probably track and field. I love, I love football too. Football number two, track number one, football's number two. I, I coach like a Marine. Real talk, this is boot camp out there. So I've had some, I've intimidated some, some kids. Most of the kids that come to me, um, it initially are really intimidated by how I coach, because I don't, there's no joking, there's no laughing, there's no, it's work, it's work, it's regimented, it's structured, you know everything you're gonna do that day. Every day you come in there, during the warm up, I lead the warm ups. I don't let the kids just, just get out there and half ass it, I lead it. Now, it sounds like we don't have fun, but we do. We have fun when we win, right? And, and I had a small team, and whenever we go somewhere, we take most of the hardware. We'd have the best team. You, you have these teams out here have all these kids, and I bring, I bring in my 20 kids, and we whoop they behind with my 20 kids. I had a young man named Elijah who broke the hurdle record at LSU, right? So um, I've had some terrific kids, so you know, and at the end of the day, you can be a really good coach. You still have, have to have some kids that are talented. I mean, I'm not saying I'm, I'm getting kids that are, are not that talented and I'm making them superstars or elite athletes. They are talented, but we're maximizing their abilities uh, with the, the way we train. Remember this, remember this, remember nothing else. They don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care.